Hey everybody, welcome back to Photorec.tv. I'm Toby and welcome to my messy studio. It's not even actually really completely set up for filming right now. I'm in the middle of packing. I leave tomorrow to lead an Arctic photography workshop. I'm really excited about that. I'm even more excited though to bring you this video that I released to the Photo Enthusiast Network community a few weeks back. The updates to Lightroom in the past couple of months plus last year. So October of 2021, they released that big change to the masking update. I'm talking about Lightroom Classic. Then in June of 2022, just about a month ago, they released an update to that update that is huge and has significantly impacted my workflow in a very positive way. I wanna show you exactly how I use it, how you can build your own presets to use it. Stay tuned to the end of this video where I show step-by-step -step for each of those presets, but they also are available to download completely free right down below this video. I'm gonna dive into this first picture right here and move to the develop panel. And you will see that under my user presets, I've got a nice little list of presets. And just a reminder, when you mouse over a preset, it gives you a quick little preview of what that preset or how that preset is gonna affect your image. So you can see some of them are a little bit more dramatic than others. Now, just a couple of quick reminders, maybe just one quick reminder. When I import, I almost always use this preset right here, auto import. What auto import does is it applies the auto button automatically on import, which usually brightens my pictures a little bit, brings down the highlights, uh, ups the shadows, adds a little vibrance, tiny bit of saturation sometimes. And in general, I agree with the auto button and the auto import as a preset often enough that I am almost always applying it on import. Only time that I might not apply auto import on import is if I've shot a lot of bracketed images. And especially if I've shot a lot of bracketed images where I haven't done something smart like used my hand or fingers in front of uh, the lens in a shot to show that this next series of five images is a bracketed image. Because if you allow auto import to happen on those images without any kind of markers on either side of them, auto edit's gonna make them all look very, very similar. And maybe you're smarter than me, but I often will then forget and say, why do I have five identical looking images? And it just slows down my workflow a little bit. So that's really the only time I'm not using auto import. It just really speeds up the process of being able to pick the winners from the losers once it's landed in your library, if you apply that auto import. Now, if I don't do auto import, which does all of these little auto edits over here, plus lens corrections, I then will at least apply lens correction. No image comes into my library without one of these two presets applied automatically. It, lens correction, there's absolutely no reason why to never apply that on import because sometimes it can fairly dramatically change your image depending on the lenses that you are using. And you want that to happen before you begin to start to really edit your image. Now you look over at this little list and you can see that it's got nice little numbers next to it. How'd that happen? I just named them that way. When I added the name or created the name, I just put a little number in front of it. So they're in this nice little order. Usually I'm skipping straight to step two, but let's, let's back up just a second. Let's pretend it's, it's come in with auto import. Here's what it does to this image. As I said, makes it look um, a good bit brighter a little bit more rich. I might not always agree with what it's done, but for quick family photos and sharing, it is great. And again, for picking the winners from the losers, it's really nice to quickly see uh, how these images respond to editing. If this is ever a epic landscape shot, almost always after import, I'm gonna reset and apply only lens correction so that I'm carefully working that image up from scratch. We've done the auto import. Sometimes I add, I like to add a little bit more contrast than what auto edit will do. Usually the contrast is in the single digits when you allow Lightroom to apply an auto edit. So I add a little bit more contrast, bump that up to 35, and it's called dual contrast 
because I often will add in a little tone curve as well. That's what that preset will do. Now this third user preset, this is where it gets really exciting. This is what the June 2022 update has made possible. Subject pop. You can now save or trigger, I should say, an AI mask within a preset. So when I mouse over subject pop or select it, it automatically uses the AI tools to find the subject and then applies the preset that I've saved as part of this. You can see right here, I now have a subject preset. Let's delete that for a second so you can watch right here in the corner. There are no masks currently, but I can come over here and I can click on this. And in that instant, it finds my niece, masks her, and if we click on this, we can see that it makes changes that I've previously added and saved. And one more feature of this that's very nice is an amount slider. So my subject pop, I've added just a little bit more exposure, brighten the shadows a little bit, a little more texture and clarity. And that's all I've done. It's a pretty gentle change. And we can, of course, come up here and turn masks off to see the difference. It's gentle, but it's noticeable. If you wanted it to be more dramatic, well, of course you could make your edits more dramatic. And I'll show you how to edit this and create this in just a second. If you wanted it to be less dramatic, you could of course make your changes less dramatic. But Lightroom has introduced this idea of a, an amount slider for these presets. And so I could just move it to the right and think of it as now 170% of those changes over here. So it's pushing them further. It's not actually moving any of these sliders, but it's multiplying or kind of dividing the effect. And we can double click that to get back to 100. So I love this because boom, one click. And then if you need to adjust it right here, quick left or right. I'm talking through these changes, but working through these is incredibly fast now. Now I have a, another AI mask preset called background de-emphasize. What does it do? Well, it takes the subject mask, inverts it and makes some changes. Let's try it. Pretty subtle in this case, maybe very subtle, but here it is. It's the outside of my niece, the area around her. And you can see that it drops exposure a little bit, drops texture and clarity a little bit. Again, really to kind of help the subject pop out. I got three A here, because I don't always use this, but I want it to come right after subject. I might want to sometimes de-emphasize things. Now remember you have two masks, AI masks available to you, subject and sky. So you can have presets that do automatically subject and automatically sky. I have a sky edit preset. In this case, it shouldn't see anything. Well, it does. It sees the fence in the background as the sky. That's silly in this case. I'm going to just delete this mask. Uh, this I'm not fully settled on my sky edit yet. I think it really depends on the situation, but we'll try this in one other uh, image in a few minutes. And then if I want, I can add just a little vignette right here. Of course, I could scroll to the bottom and drag highlight priority amount negative 10. But geez, it's a lot faster to just click right here. And that image is done. Let's work through another image a little bit faster. Here it is straight out of camera. Again, it would most likely come in under auto import. Do I want to add a little bit more contrast? I'm going to actually skip that one this time. Subject pop. Yes. Found background de-emphasize. Yeah, maybe. And a little vignette here. Now I don't think that finishes this image. I would like it actually to be a little bit brighter than auto edit. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to close the masking panel. I'm going to come back to the basic here and I'm just going to make a quick, make it a little brighter. But that's it. I feel like that's all I really need to do to put this image where I want. I actually might go back to subject pop and I might brighten it because I want her face to be just a little bit brighter. So I'm going to do that. But for quick edits, wow, really nice. Here is a DNG file out of a drone uh, of my son and other niece. And uh, let's run through here. Auto import. 
makes it a lot brighter, maybe too much. So let me, before I do anything else, darken just a bit, add a little dual contrast, subject pop. Let's see, does it find? Yep. Let's hit the O key. Nope, I need the mask panel open. There we go. The, did a nice job of finding our subject. Background de-emphasize, I don't really need that here. I'm gonna skip it, sky edit. Mm, you can see that it actually is finding the correct sky and making a change, but I don't need that either. And vignette, no, nah, I feel like it's a little too heavy here. Uh, it already has kind of a vignette from these darker bits of water on the left and the right. So that's it, I'm happy with that. So let's go one more picture doggy here. And we've done nothing to this image, right? Straight out of camera. So I'm going to hit the select subject mask, found it. I'm going to rename this mask subject. I know in the sub of the mask, it has that subject one, but I want that name right there. And I'm going to make some changes that I think I'll make to most uh, subjects in the future. Add a little more exposure, bring the shadows up, Maybe let's be a little more dramatic, dramatic and bring those up to 20. Whites up a little bit and blacks down a little bit and a little texture and a little clarity. And then we, of course we can hide this and show it to see that difference. And you might feel like it's a little strong for your tastes, then work it back down. You might feel like it's a little weak for your taste, then work it back up. But remember, you're gonna have available to you this amount slider. So I've made these changes. That's the only change I've made to this image. I'm gonna come over to my presets panel. I'm gonna click it and say, click create preset and call it something like my subject pop. And you want masking subject selected and you want support amount slider checked. That's all you need checked here. And now I hit create. There it is. This means, let's go back. To an image like this, reset it. This means when I choose my subject pop, it's going to automatically apply a subject preset. It's not in the shape of the dog. It's smart enough to do the AI mask check and find the subject and then apply your changes that you've made. And if we click on this, we see that it's got that name subject because that's what I named it. And then here are those changes that I just made. And if you felt like you wanted to be stronger on this image, you could drag to the right. If you wanted to bring it down, you could drag to the left. That's it. That's how you make these. You wanna watch the sky one real quick? Let's reset this back to scratch. I'm gonna click on select sky, finds it, rename it, my sky or something like that. Make the changes that you think you would use. And this is where you probably honestly would want a few sky edits because I don't think there's one edit that works for all skies. I don't think there's one edit that works for all subjects, but I think there is way more times where I'm doing uh, that little bit of bright and a little bit of more shadows, texture and clarity up on my subjects than often, more often than not, I'd say like 85% of the time. So that makes sense to me to have one subject pop. Sky edit, I think maybe you might want a sunset sky and a sunrise sky or softened skies or dramatic skies. And yes, Lightroom now has adaptive sky right here. I think they're all absolutely terrible. So I don't like them and I wouldn't use them. Maybe one or two of them is okay. And I do think they do support the uh, slider. Yes, so, you know, again, it might be something you could start with and try, but I think you're much more better off, much more better off creating your own that work for you. All right, let's look at how to build the background de-emphasize. Now, I'm gonna click the mask tool and click select subject. It's done a decent job, but not perfect. So again, always check in and make sure it's doing what you expect it to. I'm gonna rename this, not subject, but background. So that's gonna be the name of this mask. And now I'm gonna invert it. So there we go. It takes the subject and flips it. So it's the background. You can make your adjustments, bring down texture, clarity. If you wanted to, you could bring the noise control up and just kind of soften that background and darken it a little bit too, if you wanted to. Now, made those changes. I'm gonna come over to my presets. Create preset, in this case, masking background. Actually, sorry, check none. 
masking background, support amount tone slider, and again, background, edit, something like that. Create. Now, how to build the vignette? Easiest of all. Scroll to the very bottom, find your effects panel. I like negative 10 or 11. Come over to the presets, create preset, call it vin, whatever it is. And in this case, all you need to have checked is effects post crop vignette. And again, support amount slider, create. Now we can click this. And of course we can use this amount slider to increase or decrease the amount of vignetting. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you found it useful, give it a quick thumbs up and leave a comment. Comments are awesome. If you've got any questions I can answer, that's a great place to do that. If you want more education like this, you can consider joining the Photo Enthusiast Network. Link for that information is right down below. Bye-bye.